Hello everyone, this is Brett and this is Eclectic Playlist number three where I share with you some of the records that um, played this week, whether they're new releases or stuff from the collection. But I'm going to start things off with two brand new things. Uh, the first one, highly anticipated, one of my favorite bands of all time. And this is the brand new one from Suede, Auto Fiction, uh, or as they're known in the US, the London Suede. Um, their first album came out back in 1993. They had a run all the way to about 2002, 2003, and then they broke up and then they came back in the early 2010s and have been releasing, I think this is their fourth one now since they reunited. And every one of these reunited albums is just stellar. Auto fiction included. It starts off with the track, She Still Leads Me On, which sounds like an ode to Brett Anderson's uh, mother. It is so emotional. And they released, I think, about three digital singles before this came out. I listened to that first one a couple of times. Uh, I didn't want to wear it out until the record came because it is the opening track. And it is so incredibly powerful. Uh, I'm going to be doing, I get so many messages from people and comments, when are you going to start doing album ranking videos? And uh, I shall return soon with a suede collection or uh, complete album ranking. I just want to spend a little more time with this. But the track's 15 again. Um, it's always the quiet ones. It's great. Brett Anderson's voice sounds excellent. The band, great. So definitely pick this one up. I'll talk about it in more detail when I do the album ranking. But Suede Auto Fiction just came out this Friday. This past Friday, I should say. Whatever that was, September 16th. Uh, this is one that uh, is a first time on vinyl. So it originally came out back in 1996 on CD. Um, I know I talked about Ocean Blue, I think, in the last Eclectic Playlist video. And this is See the Ocean Blue. is their fourth album, as I said, first time on vinyl. Uh, on Orange, this is. Uh, this was a... So after their first three records, I kind of just uh, didn't pay much attention to uh, the Ocean Blue. So there's a couple in the middle that I'm not really familiar with, and this is one of them. And then I re-emerged with them back when they released um, uh, Ultramarine and then their most recent one, uh, Kings and Queens. So, uh, so this was just brand new to me. I knew the cover, I had seen the CD at the record store before. Uh, but standout tracks immediately are Bitter and Past Future Perfect. So I'm really looking forward to listening to this. Uh, Dream Pop, Jangle Pop, Ocean Blue if you're unfamiliar. Um, check out the last eclectic playlist because I think I featured two of their uh, two of their most recent albums. So this also came out uh, just uh, this past Friday as well. All right, so um, oops, sorry for that. So my uh, my brother and his fiance came over on uh, Friday night, and uh, we hung out for many hours. Uh, him and his fiance and Sarah. We made food or ordered vegan pizzas, and then we pulled out some records, and I wanted to show you uh, what we listened to. So, uh, as you guys probably know, I am a huge David Bowie fan, um, and I was fortunate to get to see him play three times. The first time being on the tour for the Outside album back in 1995. Uh, just one of those moments that, you know, when you you know, reflect on. It's just amazing that uh, that I got to experience that. Uh, in, in a lot of regards, this was David Bowie's return, although he put out Black Tie, White Noise, and Buddhist Suburbia in 1993. This is where his music went. Took a real dark turn. And uh, this album is pretty flawless, produced by Brian, Brian Eno. Um, you know, of course, it had the big single, The Heart's Filthy Lesson, um, Hello Space Boy, and the beautiful, beautiful closing track, Strangers When We Meet. But then you also have things like The Motel, which sounds total Scott Walker-ish, and uh, No Control, I'm Deranged, which was a significant song in the uh, David Lynch movie, Lost Highway. And this is from uh, the box set, the, um, oh my God, was it Brilliant Adventure, that collected all his 90s, 90s work, and it's a complete album. Uh, that, that tour that I saw him on, I know I talked about this probably when I did a ranking video, uh, but the Phoenix date, it was with Nine Inch Nails, and um, 
I just remember my brother and I sitting in the seats in front and um, Nine Inch Nails played and then they did this segue where the stage was just kind of dark and then they kind of just merged their sets and uh, they opened with, I think, I think it was something from the Low album and then Bowie performed. Um, I mean, of course it was incredible. And uh, just one of those weird moments I um, where all of a sudden during the track, I have not been to Oxford Town, someone threw just a cascade of ice cubes and it hit uh, David Bowie in the face and he stopped the song, said, would you like me to continue performing because otherwise I'll just leave. And uh, of course that would have been tragic if that would have happened. So he ended up performing, I don't remember an encore, so you could tell he was pretty agitated as anyone would be. Um, but anyway, it's a little side story there. David Bowie Outside, an incredible album, one of the best albums of the 1990s. All right, let's keep going here. So another one that we played, uh, self-titled debut from Fugazi, also known as Seven Songs, opens up with the, um, the killer track, Waiting Room. Uh, Joe Lolly on bass, just iconic uh, bass line on that. 19, uh, 1988 on that one. Also pulled this one out. The Black Crows debut, Shake Your Money Maker from 1990. I mean, this was, you know, if you were uh, tuned into the radio back then or MTV, you could not escape one of the albums. What was it? Five singles. Uh, Jealous Again. And then, of course, the, the Otis Redding cover of Hard to Handle. Twice as hard. Um, seeing things was a was a lesser single, and then the ballad she talks to angels. So black crows. All right, so let's see. Oh yeah, we still got a, uh, one more from that listening session. Um, Bart's fiance, my brother Bart's uh, fiance, is a huge hip hop fan, so we pulled out Dr. Dre's 1992 debut. So this album is 30 years old now. The Chronic, of course. Um, Dr. Dre came from NWA, and uh, this was the world's um, introduction to to Snoop Dogg. And uh, let me pull this one out. This is actually from the the Target store exclusive. The center labels on those, and this one is on this nice crystal clear vinyl. It sounds great. We have this cranked, and uh, it's a it's a really fun album. All right, so that was from those uh, sessions. Oh, and, and I should also mention too, while I'm here, um, also did spin um, this Audra going to the theater. For many of you know, that's my band. This is our. This is for um, from 2002. This was originally released on the Project Records label, and this is the first time also on vinyl. And uh, we just got this in, and we're signing and numbering them for our Kickstarter supporters. And it is up on Bandcamp. Uh, it is available in three different colors. I'll just show you one of the colors here, but this is the one named after the opening track, Midnight Moon. And this is the Midnight Moon Swing, sorry. And this is the Midnight Moon edition. You can see it's half gray, half clear with black splatter. Uh, I'll post a link in the uh, description if you're interested in checking that out. All right, two more things. Oh, I also played that before uh, my brother and in her arrived. This album is so great. From 2020, Dua Lipa, Future Nostalgia. I mean, an incredible pop record. Um, I mean, I mean the, the plays, if you look this up online, billions of plays on some of these songs. Don't Start Now, Levitating. I mean, the whole thing, beginning to end, is just great. If you're unfamiliar with Dua Lipa, I mean, it's, uh, I was kind of opposed to even checking it out until uh, one of our friends who um, contributes to our best albums list on the blog, Keith, had chose this as his number one record. And I was like, okay, well, Keith picked it as his number one record. You know, I, I at least need to check it out. And uh, wow, incredible. Dua Lipa, Future Nostalgia. All right, I think I got one left to go. Uh, also uh, an anniversary album. This came out in 1982, so it's their its 40th anniversary for Simple Minds. If you only know the Scottish band Simple Minds from The Breakfast Club, Don't You Forget About Me, you're doing yourself a big disservice. Their first like four or five albums, deeply rooted in kind of like uh, post-punk, 
uh, their first album, Real Life, a little bit more in the kind of punk realm. And then after that, Real to Real Cacophony, Empires and Dance, Sons and Fascination, Sisters Feeling Call, Sister Feelings Call, all really great. A uh, little bit of a funkiness to it. Um, but this album, which a lot of you know, hardcore Simple Minds fans will even state this as being their favorite album, New Gold Dream, 81, 82, 83, 84. Uh, opens up with some someone somewhere in summertime, which is just a, a great opening track. Uh, produced by Peter Walsh, who did the Church, did you know Scott Walker, Gene Loves Jezebel, some Clan of Zymox. Another single on this one, "Promised You a Miracle," which is actually probably my least favorite song on this, if I had to pick. Um, but "Glittering Prize" also great. Um, somebody up there likes you. This is just a stellar release. Not my absolute favorite Simple Minds album. That's probably goes somewhere between Empires and Dance from 1980 and probably Sons and Fascination. So uh, check out some Simple Minds if all you know is that song from The Breakfast Club. Definitely worthy of your time. All right, I think I covered everything. So uh, leave me a comment. Let, let me know what you guys have been listening to. And um, I'll be back with a new video. And like I said, I'll be doing a Suede ranking, album ranking coming up soon. So thanks for tuning in. See you soon. Goodbye.